these guys are icons. This is when you think about wild North American animal, this is what you think. And these guys just love this weather. They run, they play. When we were walking up to this exhibit, I noticed they came running towards us. And the first thing I noticed was their eyes, their yellow eyes just staring right at us. Tell me about those eyes. And I think that's one of the things that, that people think of when they think of wolves. It's a haunting, piercing stare when yeah. they look at you. It's intimidating, it's scary, it's exciting, it's visual. Um, they, they watch the people as much as we watch them. And that's what it seems like. And on a day like this, when there's not a lot of visitors here, we're a unique thing for them, so they'll come out and look at us. Yeah. On a busy summer day, they'll be asleep in the shade. Well, I know I love my dogs, and people say a dog is a man's best friend, but a wolf, who's a wolf's best friend? A wolf is another wolf's best friend. That's what I thought. They're, they're a pack animal. They live in groups. They, they don't belong in a household. They're, they're a wild animal. Visiting the zoo in the winter is so fun, but after exploring in the cold, chilly air, I definitely need to warm up. Off to the reptile house. Here we are in the reptile house. And the first thing I notice, Brick, is that it's warm in here. Can you tell us about the reptiles we have here? This is, this is one of the other things that makes the zoo a fun place to go to in the winter. We've got a great place for you to come in and warm up. Reptiles are cold-blooded. They don't produce a body temperature, so we have to keep them warm. Go out, you walk around the zoo and it's cold, you come in here and warm up and get to see some really cool animals. That's for sure. Reptiles are snakes, lizards, turtles, and we also have some amphibians in here, so we have poison dart frogs. And our reptiles go from an 18-foot reticulated python wow. down to smaller reptiles. I noticed the largest exhibit in this room is the Komodo dragon right behind us. Just the name Komodo dragon gets me excited. Tell us about this beautiful creature you have here. Dragons have fascinated people for, throughout history. They are found in Asian culture, they're found in European culture. Um, the Komodo dragons come from a series of islands off of Indonesia, and they're only found on those islands, which is what makes them so rare. Look at that tongue. So big. Yeah. They are one of the largest lizards in the world. They get to be 10 feet long, they weigh 200 pounds. Wow. They're, they're a massive animal, and they're just fascinating. When I think of dragons, I think of fire-breathing creatures that fly down from the sky. Why do we think of dragons like that? Well, Komodo dragons don't fly, but they do have a red tongue, and some of the theory is that uh -huh. when they would flick that red tongue out there, that was where the fire-breathing legends came from. And so that's... That makes a lot of sense. All, all these legends have some sort of basis in, in something that people saw or heard at some point. Wow, Komodo dragon is awesome. One of the other exhibits we have here is a reticulated python. She's almost 18 feet long and 135 wow. pounds. Wow. You're not going to find a snake that big in a pet store, huh? Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Wow. 
Why so dangerous? Well, she's a constrictor, and her teeth are a little bit over half an inch long, so when she attacks, she'll grab you, pull you in her coils, and then constrict. Wow. And, and constrict means? They, her, her body goes around you and stops your ribs from moving, which stops your lungs from moving. So they just you squeeze suffocate. away. Squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. Doesn't break bones, usually, but stops your lungs from moving. Wow. Scary, but cool. People either love snakes or they're terrified of them. Either way, they are fascinating creatures. Tell us a little bit about them. Yes, they are fascinating. I think that the people are afraid of snakes because they're so different than we are. They don't yeah. have arms and legs, they don't have eyelids, they don't have hair. So the legends of snakes staring you down, they don't have eyelids, they can't blink their eyes. Right. So that's different than we are. And anything that's different than we are is something that's a little bit strange or scary for us. Yeah, that's true. They don't have hands that they can use, so they have to swallow their food items whole. Reticulated pythons are also the longest species of snake in the world and have been reported up to 33 feet. Wow. So she's 18 feet, that's almost twice as big as she is right now. And the name reticulated comes from the pattern on the back. It's a web-like design, hmm. and it's good camouflage for her. She's an ambush predator. She sits and waits for a food item to come past, and then we'll reach out and grab it. She's not likely to chase something down. Right. Patience. So, Brent, most of the exhibits we've seen here have one kind of animal in one exhibit. But behind us, we have something special. We have many different species of animals all living together in harmony. Tell us about this exhibit and what we can find here. This is our Asian forest exhibit, and that's exactly what we're trying to show. Animals don't live by themselves. So in this exhibit, we have three different species of birds, two different species of turtle, and a lizard. And that's what you could find if you were in a forest in Asia. We have a pair of white-crested laughing thrushes. We have Ballymynus. Wait, say that again? White-crested laughing thrush. It's laughing thrush? Laughing thrush. Does that mean they laugh? They make a lot of noise. <laughs> sort of like a blue jay. That, that personality, that attitude. Got it. And we have crested wood partridges, and we have Ballymynus. Cool. And the Ballymynus are an endangered species. Huh. And now, is that a minor bird, the kind of bird that sings and talks back? Same family. Same different, family. Different species, though. Got it. These guys are all white with blue masks. Uh-huh. And then we have elongated tortoises and spiny hill turtles and a prehensile-tailed skink. Brent, this is a red panda? Correct. I always think of pandas as the big black and white bears. Giant pandas are. These are red pandas. Oh, those are giant pandas. These guys come from the mountains in the Himalayas, and they're a bamboo feeder also. These guys will eat thousands of bamboo leaves a day, and they love this weather. So this is the best time to come to the zoo and see them. Yeah. Snow leopards are one of the rarest big cats in the world. These guys are hunters in high elevations. That gray coat blends into the rock work that they hunt in, and they just love this snowy weather here.
dancing and playing because they can see. on our aquarium adventure is a visit with the frogs. Unlike many of the sea animals we've seen today who live in salt water, frogs live in ponds, lakes, and marshes. Frogs belong to a group of animals called amphibians. Amphibians are animals that spend part of their lives in water and part on land. My favorite thing about a frog is its tongue. A frog throws its sticky tongue out of its mouth to catch an insect and then snaps it back inside. Not exactly how humans use their tongues to eat. We need our tongues to chew, swallow, talk, taste, even sing. So Brent, tell us about these amazing bison here in the zoo. These are one of the largest land animals in North America. They used to roam the, the western United States in herds of thousands. The zoo experience in the winter is very different than the zoo experience in the summer. Animals that we have out year round are animals that can take this kind of climate. So they have that big shaggy coat. Now are they eating these Christmas trees? They'll eat a little bit of it. We give them hay and hay is their staple diet. The trees are something that they um, they play with and they beat up. But I was going to say, I mean, it looks like they're actually just playing. I was really surprised at how big they actually were. These are full grown. It's a male and two females. The male is the one on the left hand side, larger animal, bigger hump in the back, larger horns. The two females are in there on the right. Yeah, so I noticed they have this incredible fur. They have large hooves. They have a giant head. And on top of their head are these massive horns. Who are they defending themselves from? What are the predators of the bison in the wild? Wolves. Wolves. Ooh. How much do they actually weigh, full grown? About a 1,000 pounds. A 1,000 pounds. Wow, that's like half a car. Yep. 
they're, they're a big animal. They're a strong animals, so we were very careful when we worked with them. If I saw a bison in the wild, I would not want to get close to it. Not want to get close to it, not want to get out of your car. Yeah, which is another great reason why visiting a zoo is so awesome. Because we get to stand so close and we're safe and protected and we can see this amazing creature up close. So cool. Many animals adapt in amazing ways to survive in the wild. For some, their skin or fur can act as camouflage, so they blend right into their environment. Here in the Eat and Be Eaten exhibition, this is all about the food chain. Who eats who and who sometimes gets eaten by who. In here we have the red foot tortoises. These guys are native to South America and they love to eat all different kinds of fruit. It is their absolute favorite food. And if you see in here, there's also some golden finches flying around. These guys are the Degus. They live in central Chile and down in South America and live way high up in the mountains. They're kind of like a gerbil that you might see in the pet store. One of these very silly things about these guys, they love to store food in their cheeks. So their cheeks get big and puffy as they collect all different kinds of seeds and nuts. In here, we see the burfish. And just like other members in the pufferfish family, if they get threatened or scared at all, they can puff up into a huge ball to scare off anybody who might want to make a snack out of them. And you can see all those sharp spines all over their back would make them a very unappetizing meal. So these are our Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Now these are very different than the cockroaches you'd see in the city garbage cans. I these hope so. guys, exactly. These guys love to live in dark, moldy old logs and wedge themselves in and eat old bits of vegetation. You saw we Look just gave them. them. Coming. There they're coming out. Oh, Soup's on. <laughs> these are the newest addition to our Liberty Science Center family, the cotton top tamarins. These wonderful little monkeys, they're extremely vocal. They have many different sounds that they use to communicate within their family. That's one of my favorite parts about these monkeys. They stick together in big family groups. And when it's time to have a baby, all of the grown-ups in the entire family take care of the little baby all together. 